ideas for budget. That's good enough for me. Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Nerd Enterprises Incorporated webcast. We're here to bring you the 10-minute household budget. I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks in Excel and how to set up a budget like this very quickly. And I'm going to get right into it by blowing up my screen here. <clears throat> and we'll take you over to my desktop. By the way, the first thing you're going to see here is the uh, QuickBooks blog that we have. And coming up on July 1st is our open forum webinar. You can actually submit your questions ahead of time. Join in on the webinar and we'll answer your questions. I will answer your questions. And you can also, of course, ask questions during the meeting. There will be a chat Q&A box in there where you can type your questions and I'll give you the answers. It's a three-hour webinar, $50 registration. Not a bad deal at all. And you can get specific answers to your questions. So join us. Visit our website at nerdenterprises.com. All the information is here on our QuickBooks blog at theqbw.com. Theqbw.com. Now let's talk about the household budget. You want to keep this simple, but you want to make sure you include everything. So let's talk about a household with two incomes. And we'll set it up for, we start in January. Even though we're way past that now, it's always good to lay these things out with the entire calendar year in place. One thing you can do while you're uh, setting this up this way is for the first few months you can put in the uh, real data and then that will help you of course get an idea of what should be projected for the future. Now there's no easier way to enter these dates in the first time around. Once you have the whole year in, I'm going to show you in a second how you then can very quickly and easily copy it out so you can get it a second year in place. And we're ready to do that now. So the first thing you'll do is you'll highlight this whole range. Control C to copy it. You can click over here at the next available cell and press Control V to paste it. And now we want to take the 2009s and replace them with 2010s. So it's a simple search and replace. Control F is in find. Find 2009. Come and click the replace tab. Type 2010 and choose replace all. And it made 13 replacements. That means somehow we've got one too many. What happened here? That is strange. That is very strange. Ah! I had an extra February. How silly. Which means I had an extra February there too. It's important to pay attention to these things because that's how you can find errors like this. Now let's say one member of the household has 5000 a month in income and the other one 6000 So we simply type those numbers in. And by the way, when I'm dealing with numbers, even though we're really talking about dollars, I want to format these for comma formatting. And then we need a total. This is the first formula we're going to write and it's a real simple one. You type the equal sign some open parentheses you can come with your mouse and drag and highlight the range close parentheses enter and now what we can do is we can highlight this range control C to copy hold down your shift key and press your right arrow key to go all the way across when you've got the range let go of everything and press enter and then we'll just widen these columns up so that everything can fit also we can make these dates look a little prettier I've just um, selected the whole range and I'll show you how to get to the uh, format cells dialog. You have some basic number formatting options right here on the ribbon, but there's a little arrow at the bottom right you can click on, and it brings up the uh, format cells dialog, which is the equivalent of when in 2003 you would click format and then choose cells. Now it's already recognized that we've got a date format selected, so if I go to the custom option here, it starts me off with the generic date formatting based on what's in there. And look at the sample here. This gives you an idea of what it's going to look like, and you can see, of course, that that's what my dates presently look like. We'll go in here and change that. If I type M for month, D for day, Y for year. So I want the month, let's say, in triple-letter uh, triple, uh, format. 
I type three M's, it recognizes that's what I want. I put a single quote, year, year, Y, Y. So I've got my January 09. And that way I've got some nice, uh, nicely formatted date headers. Now let's get the expenses in here. Here you're going to do your mortgage, or if you have rent, that's what you put there. Let's say utilities, uh, groceries, gas, and so on. You'll have to fill in your own, obviously. Let's say your mortgage is 400 a month, your utilities are 500 a month, your groceries, maybe 800 a month, your gas is going to be 800 a month at these prices. Now let's just, you know, all kidding aside, just put in something. Let's say it's uh, 40 bucks a week times four weeks is 160 for two people. 160 times two. We'll put that in there. And you can add in more as you go. I want to get to the heart of this really though, which is how to get, it, get this into a cash flow. So again, I do a simple sum formula just like I did above. I'm going to highlight the whole range across, copy it, enter. And now over here, I'm ready to put net cash flow. And that's a simple formula. I'm simply going to type equals. I click on my total minus my total expenses. And I should give better descriptions here so I know which total is which. Total income, total expenses. Now I can copy my net cash flow formula across. And I'm doing it quickly here because, like I said, I want to get right to the point. So the next thing is beginning cash balance and then ending cash balance now in the first month the beginning cash balance is going to be something I enter I have to go and find it online and put in whatever my balance is today let's say it's 25,000 is what I've got in the bank and again we want this formatted for comma formatting just so everything lines up nicely now my ending cash balance is simply my net cash flow plus my beginning balance. And then in the second month and every month after that, the beginning cash balance is the previous month's ending. So this is the whole tricky part, but this is the whole key to how this works. And then I just copy this across. And what this tells me is that at this rate, in at the end of December, I should have 150000 in the bank. Now again, keep in mind, this is not complete. It's based on the fact that we have net positive cash flow every single month of 5620, which is not realistic. And I'll give you one example of where you're going to lose it, especially if we're uh, owning a home. Let's go and pay some property taxes. And, uh, well, they really do. Let's say we pay them in March. And then April, we're going to pay our income taxes, right? And then property taxes come up again, and, and uh, we really have till December to pay them. So now it doesn't look quite as good. Still looks good though. But again, you have a lot more to go. You have a lot more expenses to put in here for the average household. I'm just trying to give you an idea. But here's the whole key. And then the last thing you can do is format this stuff so it's easy to read. So I want to highlight totals. You know, by just giving it some nice formatting here. And then once I've done that one time, I can use my format painter and I can do it like that. Now the ending cash balance is kind of the key to this whole thing. So this one I really want to stand out. So let's just uh, make it look a little different. Maybe make it a little bigger. And then the last thing I'll show you is, let's say we're in a situation where we have a lot of expenses. Let's just stick something in here. I want to force it to go negative in a sense. Doing pretty well on this budget. Um, let's just stick $10,000. Great. Now the last thing I want to do then on this ending cash balance is again I'm going to go to my cell formatting options and I come over here to custom and the second section after the semicolon is what happens when the number is negative I just type the word red and put it in brackets, not parentheses, but brackets. And that way, if the cash balance ever goes negative, it lights up in red for me. So I know this is a problem. I have to go look and see where I can cut back on expenses or, you know, if I can increase income, great. So that's pretty much the 10-minute budget. 
Hopefully I haven't gone over 10 minutes. I'll check that after the recording. If you like what you see, then visit us at www.nerdenterprises.com. And we'll uh, check back with you real soon. And hopefully uh, catch you on the web. Watch our webcast and go to our QuickBooks blog, www.thequbw.com. Thanks for joining.